On today's episode of Glow Trotting with Trey, you are going to hear an interview with Farley Guy, one of Elvis's childhood friends that grew up with him at Lauderdale Courts. Farley knew Elvis before Elvis was a superstar. You will hear about stories of Elvis at Lauderdale Courts, Elvis singing, Elvis swimming, Elvis being inducted into the army, Elvis before Elvis was known to the world. So be sure to like this video for me, share it with your Elvis friends, don't double dribble, subscribe to Glow Trotting with Trey for new episodes each Tuesday on Elvis Presley. Now, let's get to the interview with Farley Guy, Elvis's childhood friend. Stay tuned. <laughs> what it was like to live there at Lauderdale Courts and to just be friends with Elvis during that time in your life. Well, there's four of us running around together. It was Elvis and Buzzy, and they called him Buzzy, Evan Porgus, but he got cancer pretty bad. And, uh, but uh, Paul Dewar, and he's dead, and naturally Elvis is dead, but uh, me and Buzzy are the only two that is left that really run around with Elvis until he got, you know, singing, he got kind of big, and old Colonel Parker kind of robbed him, you know, with a lifetime contract and half of what he made. But uh, I never did think too much of Colonel Parker. But uh, anyway, uh, uh, we I met him when I was 12 years old. My daddy died. My mama moved into the and that's when I met Elvis. Now, is this right? Did uh, did you actually live upstairs above him? Yeah, I lived on the second floor. Paul Dewar lived on the third floor. And Buzzy lived around. Right. Evan Barbers lived right around the corner from us. And we all run around together. And did anybody smoke or drink or do any of that kind of stuff. But... Uh, and then he got his draft notice in the service, and he called me. I mean, I don't know where he called me. I called him, but I talked to him. And uh, about a year, he got it postponed for a while. And about a year later, I got mine. Okay. And we went off to Fort Smith together, but he didn't stay at Fort Smith. He went on to Texas and then went on to Germany, and I went uh do the basic training twice there at uh, Fort Smith, and he uh, he went to Germany, and that's where he met Priscilla. When uh, I never did meet her, even though I I went out there, we we both got discharged at the same time. Met back in Memphis, and uh, we went skiing, and first one thing or another for about a week. But I was married, and I had to get back to my job. Yes, sir. So he did stay in touch with you guys uh, after after the army and after you guys become adults. Oh yeah, he, he did stay about two or three days, and he kept. It was so open over at Fort Smith that traffic, you know, just come and go as as it at will, you know. And he uh, they decided to send him on to Texas. You know, I, I'm looking right now, I see a lot of great pictures of you and Elvis during uh, the induction into the Army. Right. Tell me about that day, uh, Mr. Guy. What, what, what was, how was the hoopla surrounding that day when you and Elvis got inducted into the Army? Well, I don't really know how he thought about it all, but anyway, uh, uh, but I took my basic eight weeks of basic training at, at uh, Fort Smith. He went on to, you know, to... Uh, Texas, and uh, and I didn't see him no more until we got out of the army. Yeah, I read I read a story where I think that you took him out boating one afternoon. Took him where? Uh, out on a boat back in Memphis. Oh yeah, we we were skiing and put around down in McKellar Lake for about a week, and then. Uh, like I said, I had to get back home and get back to work. And uh, I went out there several times, but it was such a hassle, you know, to get in. Also, people on the gate would change from time to time, and uh, which I 
went out several times off and on through the years there, but the last 10 years of his life, I, I didn't get to see him much, you know. So do you, do you remember the last time you saw Elvis? Uh, I don't know. Like I said, I'm 85 years old. Oh, and, yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. And his birthday was in January. Mine was in June. He was about six months older than I was. Oh wow! Okay, but uh, but you said that y'all became friends when you're around twelve years old. Is that right? Right. Can you tell me any stories about uh, you, any fun stories that you can remember from Lauderdale Courts? Well, you know, uh, did any of us have any money at that time? You know, and we didn't have a whole lot. To, uh, we went to Suzanne Theater. They had two of them. One up on North Main. One down there on Jackson Avenue. Uh, we tried to one time get, get a job. In fact, I got a job as a carpenter shipper the first year that I met him, uh, carrying the timbers and two by fours and everything, the nails and everything for the guy that was building the building out there behind Kennedy Hospital. He didn't have no work. Then the next year we didn't get no jobs. In fact, we went out to a place called Precision Two Company. And they, as soon as they signed, find out how old we are, was, you know, it, he didn't, they didn't hire us. And finally, I got a job the next summer uh, at uh, Scholar Supermarket down there across from, uh, you might well say, St. Joe's Hospital and the Kids Hospital now, you know. Uh-huh. Uh, we went to the theater quite a bit, you know, but we go two for a quarter Monday through Thursday. And uh, I was delivering groceries at that time, and, uh, and then finally I got a job for another company. I'm not gonna call no names, nothing. But I was 16, and uh, I, I like a month being 18 years old when the front office found out about it. So they put me on from two to ten in the evening to get by the child labor law. Yes, sir. They talked about. They talked about fire me but uh i was doing real good with the job that i had and uh they kept me on and uh uh i wanted to buy a farm down at uh, arkabuddle mississippi just about 100 acres and it's right off the government land there on that lake but uh, he told me don't worry about it and uh, uh he'd buy a farm one day and he did a place on 301, I believe, was going from Memphis down to Arca Butler. Yeah, the Circle G Ranch. Yeah. So he, he told you not to worry about it, that he would buy one one day. <laughs> right. But uh, I, I never did go down there. Uh, by then, I had two or three kids and working two jobs, and, which I worked at... Uh, at that time, at Dixie Wax Printing Company, I played my mind in a job we printed. Uh, we printed a tape chip bag and bread wrappers and stuff like that. And, uh, but I didn't see the last 10 years of his life. If I had known that he had done got in that position to uh, where he had to take something to liven up or something to calm him down at bedtime well uh, I would have wouldn't have talked to him I don't know if it would have done any good or not but I would but he was married to Priscilla then and uh, I never did meet her you never did meet Priscilla uh, did you remember um did you remember Dixie Locke do I remember what uh his girlfriend there during when he was there at Humes I believe was Dixie uh no, I don't remember her, but I remember uh, another girl. I had her name on my mind. I started talking and looking at Billy Wardlow was her name from Coldwater, Mississippi. She lived on the third floor of the next row of apartments over. It was three sections of that building we lived in. It was the middle of it where we lived, the one back to the her right and one back to the left. She lived upstairs. Uh, or her name was Billy Wardlow. It was was that was that a girlfriend of Elvis's? Yeah. Wow. Okay. 
I wonder if she is one of these girls I see. You know, you and Elvis and Buzzy and Paul have a few pictures together during that time. And I believe there's a picture of Elvis and Buzzy and two girls are in that picture. Could she be one of those uh, girls? I, I think the picture you're talking about it was a picture of me and Elvis and two girls. That's it. Yes, sir. That's actually you in that picture. That's awesome. Right. Who, do you remember those two girls? No, I don't. They were just... Some, some girl here last, last year wrote to uh, my... I got a son that's... Uh, that's about 55 years old, and uh, they sent him to an old address because his name was Farley Guy, too. Okay. But anyway, the lady called my daughter, which was used to live in that subdivision up there in Henderson, Tennessee, and uh, sent some pictures, and uh, that picture there was in that bunch of stuff. On, I couldn't name them because I couldn't remember them, but I did have the pictures printed and sent back to my daughter, sent them back to the girl. Well, I'm just, you know, I'm just glad that there's pictures of you and Elvis that exist during that time. Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, because it, 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 you know, the, the, the painting that they've tried to paint the picture of Elvis during that time in his life is that he was, he was just a shy kid and didn't have any friends or anything, but that's not true. Yeah, he didn't have, a, he, the four of us was it. At that time, uh, I was living in Lauderdale Courts. Well, can you tell me about this place? Because I'm very fascinated to learn uh, of the place called the Triangle. There at Lauderdale Courts. I I guess it was an area that you guys would go and play baseball and just hang out Uh, at? We played football. We didn't play touch football. We played regular tackle. Tackle football. No no nothing, yeah. That was football. (laughs) Those are they were down, at, down at the end of the, where the court kind of turned and went uh, another direction down in there. And the triangle was, yeah. Yeah, I've heard some famous stories about that triangle. One of the stories I heard was, I guess there was a few big trees out there. Do you remember that? I have a few trees right along uh, the uh, by the apartments, but out in the field, it was it was wide open. Yes, sir, and that would have been where the triangle was. Yeah. Uh, uh, one of the stories that I read was that Elvis would sit out there and sing. Would do what? He would sit out there and play his guitar or sing or something for for some people. Well, he done that right in front of the Lauderdale Courts at 185 uh, North Winchester, I think, and 3rd Street right there. 3rd Street come down right by the courts. Yeah, right out there on the steps. Yeah, I, I, right there on the steps out front there. So you do we, re, you do remember Elvis singing to y'all? Do I remember what? <clears throat> you do remember Elvis singing and playing a Oh, g- yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was kind of a Hank Williams fan, you know, but, you know, I just kid stuff. But uh, anyway, I got him to play a little bit of Hank Williams stuff, but most time he's just clowning. Oh, so playing. he... So he would play Hank Williams. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's amazing, man. That's amazing. He did a lot of you know stuff, and in fact, uh, he even uh, uh, Blue Moon of Kentucky, and uh, uh, I think some of them in that movie he made, you know, with uh, some guys. Uh, we all went to him for. I I went back to the country where I was raised out there with my granddaddy, and uh, in uh, the eighth grade I should have stayed in Memphis. I didn't, but I went back out there, and uh, I went to uh, uh, Humes in the ninth grade. So you were in Elvis's class at Humes? No, I was. Uh, I, was to, I played a couple of times during them school years. That's the reason my mom and daddy sent me to the country with my granddaddy, where I rode a horse school for about five miles. I had a uh, aunt that lived right next to the school, and that's why I kept the horse during the daytime. Oh, so you would ride a horse to school? Oh, uh, yeah, from the third grade through the uh, seventh, I think it was. That's amazing, and, Mr. Guy. 
<laughs> and I left five miles from school, but I took kind of the back roads through the fields and first one place and another, but still. It, uh, back in them days, we had some pretty good winters, you know. Oh, yes, sir. And, uh, but I never missed a day in. But I did stay in Memphis with my mama, but I was trying to help her, you know, because I had, uh, three sisters, but two of them were still at home with me and my mom. In fact, I, I helped my mama up to, uh, me and another sister took her and kept her to laugh. She liked about six months being a hundred year old. Oh, that is awesome. And, uh, I said she'd never go to a nursing home. But there for a long time, I, after I got back out of the Army, I got back in the horse business. I was just thinking about, uh, Buzzy had told me, and I believe you may have been with him, or it could have been Paul, but he was telling me about, I, I guess, one of the last times that he saw Elvis was at a New Year's party. And he said that Elvis pulled him and either you or Paul into a closet there at the party to talk to y'all. Could that have been you? Do you remember anything like that? Well, I remember the party, but I don't remember the closet. No way to, you know, like I said, I had a stroke back in 2016. A lot of things are not clear to me. I understand. Hey, but you sound really great. I mean, you you sound really great, and you said your mom lived to be 100, so you have some good genes, Mr. Guy. I doubt that. <laughs> <laughs> he said he doubts that, huh? <laughs> Yeah. Well, well, you were telling me, though, and you, you told me about you guys would go to the Suzor. Right. Which, so you said on, is it Jackson Street or Jackson Avenue? No, it went on Jackson Street, Suzor, and his old man, I think he, he worked in the National Harvester. I don't know this for sure, you know, and be honest about it, but I did know he owned a lot of land over around Desert, Arkansas. Off of White River, uh, okay. But that was years later that I found out that. But so with with the Suzor, one, uh, one on Main Street up at North Main. So which one did y'all go to the most? The one up on North Main. North Main. That was closer to Lauderdale. Yes, it just well, it was Third Street, Second Street, and that Main. You know, and uh, it wasn't two or three blocks up there at the most. You know. Do you remember any movie that y'all saw there? Oh, I don't know. Well, most of them were, you know, Western, you know, like uh, Johnny Mac Brown and uh, Roy Rogers and uh, Gene Autry and them kind of movies, you know. Yeah, and you had no idea. You had no idea that one day your friend would be up there. No, I didn't. What was that like for you when Elvis first become like a star? How did that make you feel, Mr. Guy? Oh, I, a lot for him and thought a lot of it, but uh, in fact, I every now and then I see an old movie come on TV, you know, that he was in. Yeah, I bet that just brings back memories to you, though, don't it? Oh, yeah, yeah. To see him young and like that. Right. Yeah, I mean, that's the Elvis you knew, that young Elvis. and Right. That's amazing, man. That's amazing. Buzzy was telling me, and you may have been with them, Buzzy was telling me that you guys would go swimming up at Malone Pool. Yeah, we did. Can Every you tell time. me about that pool? Was it a big pool or what? Yeah, it was a big pool. Oh, it was a government pool, a city pool, you know. Yeah, he down said that. No, uh, Second Street, I believe, down in North Memphis, the other side of us, you know, wasn't far down there, but seven, eight blocks or ten, I don't know. But y'all would walk out there, right? Oh, yeah, we had to, we didn't. <laughs> Didn't us have no money or no car. Elvis' daddy was still living though then, mm -hmm. and his mama she was kind of a sickly type person. But I, I knew Vernon Percy and I knew his mama. But uh, the first house he bought at the where he moved out of Lauderdale Court down there on Fourth Street or Seventh Street or some some street down there, and uh, which I done moved down there on. Uh, about a half a mile from Lauderdale Court. Uh, they made us move when I got that job out there at uh, the company I was working for. That, uh, uh, I was to 
trying to think of the name of it. But anyway, uh, uh, I live down on Parkway, just about seven, eight blocks from where I put Lauderdale Court, you might well say, and, and they was moved down on, and Paul uh, and his mama moved down there somewhere pretty close to her. I know he lived on, it. was it Alabama Street? No, nah, it wasn't Alabama. I don't know. It was, uh, it was, it was there in North Memphis, just the other side of St. George Hospital and all back in there. Okay. Back towards, uh, I might well say, a little bit to the north of Lauderdale Court. Uh, we went to a few uh, parties, you know, uh, local, you know, around more condition. All but uh, that one trip we made to Coldwater, Mississippi, where Billy Wardlow was having a party. Oh, wow. And, and she had a, a cousin that uh, named Carolyn uh, McCall. Uh, but I, I don't know. Uh, we went down there one night. His daddy had an old, uh, finally bought an old uh, uh, Lincoln, kind of about like, it looks like about like a 40 Ford, you know? Yes, sir. But it was a Lincoln, and we drove, he drove, I didn't drive, but uh, uh, down to Coldwater, Mississippi, to, uh, which is just south of, of uh, Hernando, Mississippi. Oh. It's it probably about 60 miles, I'd say, at the most. And he went, we he went down there and visited Billy. Yeah, we went down there to a party one night, it was kind of a hello. Uh, we always had, had uh, record players or something to music and dance a little, and like I said, didn't any of us drink or smoke back in any of days. Y'all just had good, clean fun. Right. <laughs> I'm reading here, and you can maybe it'll jog your memory there, but you actually went to one of Elvis's earliest concerts in 1955, somewhere in Mississippi. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Or was it Missouri? Oh, I, I went to Saxon, Missouri one night with him and uh, uh, it was Johnny Cash, uh, Gary Lewis, and uh, Carl Perkins. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm leaving anybody out or not, but they had a thing. It was, it was in uh, Saxon, Missouri. Yeah, and I, I'm reading here. It looks like, did you ride with Elvis to that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Did do you remember if he had like a El Dorado Cadillac? Because that's what it said in the article. Well, he he had some kind of Cadillac. I don't remember what kind it was, but uh, uh, that was when he done got to singing and being public with. So he started off with Sun Records. Was a couple of him. Uh, I didn't think I'd ever forget them two boys' names. I thought they were brothers. They might not have been. Played guitars. One of them played a Scotty Moore, guitar. Scotty Moore, uh, and Scotty, uh, Scotty Moore, yeah. and Bill Black. Yeah, that's who it was. Man, so but you yeah. but you went to Missouri with Elvis to one of his yeah. early concerts, and Johnny Cash played. Yeah. Wow. Johnny Cash, Carl Parkin, and uh, Jerry Lewis and Elvis. It seemed like there was one more, but I'm not sure. Was it like a little gymnasium or something? It was kind of like, uh, it might have been uh, in a school auditorium or something. I don't remember. Yeah. How did the crowd react to Elvis during that time? Uh, they loved him. Yeah, I bet that was amazing for you, wasn't it? All right. <laughs> hey, the girls go crazy, didn't they? Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's amazing, Mr. Guy. Right. To, hey, to, to know that you were there and alone for the ride during this time is in his life right. to superstardom. Right. Wow. Well, is there any, any other kind of memories that you can think of? Like you, you were saying that you knew Mr. and Miss Presley. How, um, what kind of people were they during that time? They were uh, just poor people like, like all the rest. But they were but, good. Uh, they were nice. Miss Presley, uh, I, like I said, I never seen him do nothing wrong. He just work and come home, you know. Yes, sir. He was working on a United Paint Company, I believe was the name of it. I'm not real sure, but that's when we were all living right down Lauderdale Courts. 
but it was just United Paint numbers over about where across in front of the apartments we lived in, across the open field over there. And uh, he, I'm sure he just walked because he didn't have no vehicle to uh, the time it uh, just before I moved out of the courts, which I must have been about 16 or so. And uh, Elvis was 16, but like I said, his birthday was in January, mine was in June. Yes, sir. He was that much older than me, you know. And then he finally got, he let Elvis have that car, or ride, drive that car. Right. I bet Elvis was all around the town after that. I don't know. I, I, that's the only time I ever remember riding in it was the time we went to Coldwater, Mississippi, to Italy, Waterloo. Uh, like I said, uh, she lived in a lot of their courts now. I guess she might have been, you know, he was from Tupelo, which I didn't know that for several years, you know. Yes, sir. But uh, he was from Tupelo, Mississippi where Elvis was born and raised. And, uh, and I don't know what year they moved to Memphis, but they lived in Lauderdale Court when I made it. Yeah, I think they moved to Memphis in 1948. Well, that's close. So that had been close to when you guys, when you probably moved in, in 49, right. 1949 maybe? Yeah. Um, have, you been to, have you been back to the apartments in recent years? No, you have I it. know when we all lived there, it breaks your heart to think about it. When we all lived there, if you broke a screen or wonder anything, you fixed it. If you done anything else like that or a little worse, you set your furniture out on the street out there, you know. Oh, they'd yeah. make you leave. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. If you got to make a, a decent, you know, 30 or 35 hours a week was pretty good money back in them days, you know. Yeah, yes, sir. Yeah, I, I think that's actually what happened to Elvis and them. I believe that his mom got a job maybe over there at that hospital, and all of a sudden they uh, were making a little bit more money than what they need to be made, making to live there. Right. So, they, hey, they, they had to leave. <laughs> yeah, we, we definitely had to leave after I got that job out there at that company I was working for. You know. That's amazing, Mr. Guy. That's amazing how different the times were compared to now. Right. Yes, sir. Do you uh, do you have any memory? Did y'all like ever walk down to Bill Street, or was Bill Street important to y'all? No, it wasn't at that time. It wasn't at that time. Yeah, well, it wasn't, you know, like it is now, you know. But uh, but uh, Bill Street was another street with a few joints on it, you know, which we weren't interested in that in no way, but uh, uh, not not any show place or, or uh, like it is over there now, you know. I hadn't I had met him in many years. Uh, back in Memphis too much. I got a daughter that lives over there, but uh, uh, I don't hardly even like driving through it. Yeah, it's a different place. I, because I knew how Chicago was because I was stationed at a, a missile base uh, at Homewood, Illinois. That's where they sent me my whole time after I got out of basic training. And uh, Chicago was not uh, like maybe, you know, killing a two a day, you know, was nothing unusual. In Chicago, no, sir. Right. I think it's worse now, don't you think? <laughs> I mean, it is. And, uh, and and Memphis done got about it bad. Hey, you know? Memphis is a yeah. Memphis is a pretty bad place these days. Yeah, right. And I'm sure that would make you that that makes you and El- it would make Elvis sad if he knew. Yeah. How bad that uh, Memphis has become. Right. Hey, Buzzy had told me something. You might remember this. Uh, did you did you and Paul and Elvis and Buzzy have like a a little lawnmower business? Like where y'all cut grass? Anyway, we probably did because we done whatever we could do to make a quarter, you know. Yeah, he said something about they y'all would make thirty five cents. Yeah, thirty five cents a yard, Mister Guy. Yeah, <laughs> that's a lot of money though back then. Oh well, yeah, yeah, yeah. You could buy uh, seven eight cold drinks or Hershey bars or whatever, you know. Yes, sir. For a quarter, you know. 
Well, did you did you remember uh, the first time that um, uh, Elvis invited you up to Graceland? Well, I like I said, I made several trips out there, you know, but I don't remember the first one. You no, know, you hear those stories where he was so proud to show off his house. Oh yeah, he he was really really. If anything, he done done changed anything in the building, you know. Uh, he 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 was real nice, and he was uh, very considered of being. Uh, appreciated you know about things and uh he always spent uh where i i guess i got a little uh huffy about stuff you know but uh i knew as close we was he didn't have time to call he could have one of them flunkies call but uh in fact i could have been one of them flunkies but i i just didn't want to do it in fact i was married anyway you know and yeah, that might have that. Hey, that might have affected your marriage back then. <laughs> oh yeah, because <laughs> it, it it seems like all the guys got a divorce, right? You know, because Elvis. I don't know if they allowed women to be around too much. You know, <laughs> right? <laughs> but uh, wow. But I I am happy to see all these uh, great pictures of you and Elvis during your Army induction day. Right. I mean, I I can only imagine that that was comforting for both. For you to be there with Elvis and and Elvis to be there with you. In that picture of me and Elvis and Bobby Mahari, I didn't know him even from up there. He was from up there around Atoka, Tennessee. And uh, he stayed with me the whole time I was in the service. Which guy is that? Which picture is that? The picture of me and Elvis and a couple of black guys and another white guy standing back there. Yeah. Uh, that was Bobby Maher, and I heard here a while back he had died. Is he the white guy? Yeah. Okay. Wow. So I can be. I'll. I'll. I'll make sure to put his name on there uh, yeah. when I show this picture. Okay. So he. You said he just recently passed. I don't know if recently or you know, in the last year or so. You know, but yeah. Uh, I think he was on the. Uh, uh, sheriff's department, or police department, or something that you got out of service up around Atoka, Tennessee. Okay. Well, I, I know, I know for a fact because I read it in Rex Mansfield was his name, and I think he got inducted with you guys on that day, and y'all got on that bus. I guess they were sending you to Fort Chaffee. Is that right? Yeah, he sent me. Well, we both went to Fort Chaffee. And- but Elvis wasn't there about three days, and they sent him on to Fort Hood. To Fort Hood. But on that yeah. very first day, I think y'all got on that bus there in Memphis. And, oh, yeah. And y'all drove all the way, and they stopped in West Memphis, Arkansas. Is that right? I'm not sure about that. But <laughs> I, it, it, there was some kind of story where the bus stopped and got sandwiches and drinks or something, and there was such a big crowd, I guess Colonel Parker had put it out, and all these fans were lined up there in front of that place where uh, the bus stopped at, and Elvis couldn't even get off the bus. Right. I didn't imagine any of us got off the bus there, but uh, yeah. I wouldn't think so. But anyway. But that's great to know that you were on that bus ride all the way to. Right. Oh, yeah. Wow. Well, that's amazing, Mr. Guy. Well, I, uh, one one last thing, and, and I, you know, I appreciate you giving me this time and telling me your stories. Well, there was no trouble. I just, like I said, my memory is as good as it was, especially since 2016. Well, you know, I, I, I think that you've you've really painted a really good pl- picture for myself and my fans. To You yeah. know, my most important thing is I want to see Lauderdale Courts and I want to see Memphis how it really was through you guys, your guys' eyes. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you and Buzzy helped paint that picture for us. Well, that's good. But, uh, I'm really uh, glad he was able to remembers and stuff as well as he does but like I can say he don't never complain and he don't never tell you how bad off he is but I know it's bad he is bad I didn't know that he didn't let me know that yeah oh man well hey I'm gonna keep him in my prayers yeah but uh, but you and Buzzy have stayed close all these years oh yeah well what was Paul like what was your friend Paul like oh he was real good uh, first time I saw Paul he was with Elvis out in the front of there. The little body, the, the, the veins were kind of U-shaped, you know, there in front. And uh, 
uh, him and Paul, uh, Paul was fixing a baseball. In fact, he played ball in school, baseball, but he, he didn't play no football. I've done it all. I was yes, gifted, and the Lord helped me. <laughs> but, uh, uh, but, Paul, but Paul and Elvis were throwing a baseball the first time you met. Yeah, yeah. Paul was a good baseball pitcher. He was a good pitcher. Wow. Yeah. And, uh, of course, we played on the same team, you know, me and Paul and Buddy. Uh, Buddy, I think, had failed a time or two. And, but anyway, uh, us three were in the same grade, I think. At but Humes High Elvis, School. Elvis might have been a grade ahead of us. At Humes. Yeah, at well, Humes, right. That's amazing. That's amazing, man. Well, one last thing, and I, I know I'll let you go, is here in 2020, uh, Mr. Guy, I ask this to everybody. What does Elvis mean to you? Uh, he was a, a, a very meant a lot to me. We were a very, very close friends. Except the last, like I said, the last 10 years of his life, if, if I'd only known that uh, he done got it kind of messed up, I would have. Don't know whether it's done any good or not, but I don't went and talked to her. But, but going back there to Lauderdale, how 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 big was your apartment? Because I, I was uh, two bedrooms, a living room, and a kitchen and a bath. I guess it was just like Elvis's. Oh yeah, probably. Did you ever go into Elvis's apartment? Uh, well, maybe to the living room, you know, but uh, uh, I never went any further in there than that. Yeah, you know, I, I I know that Elvis and his mom and dad lived there, but they also said that his grandmother lived there as well. And I, I think she, I think she did for a while. I'm just wondering how, where in the world did she sleep at? I don't have no idea. <laughs> because I, I saw how little the bedroom was, the bedrooms. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Not very big. <laughs> <laughs> they was not very big, no sir, no sir. And then especially about once a month. I remember my uh, mama and girls, we didn't have no buffer or nothing, but had wax, kind of wax floors in there, you know, and they dragged one or other around on a tile and buffing the floor, you know. Oh, wow. Wow. And and as you told me earlier, they came by and ex- inspected your apartments, right? Yeah, every month. Every month. And boy, you better... You better not be putting no scratches on the walls or nothing. But that's what I'm talking about. After we all moved away there a few years later, they just demolished the darn thing, you know. Yeah. I guess it's the supervision they had over the, over the apartments, you know. It just broke your heart to go by and see what windows busted or your uh, screen tore off or uh, uh, I don't know what happened, but uh, it was bad. Yeah, and I think it's set like that for many years, and I think just probably the last fifteen years they've renovated the place and actually right. actually made it where it was better living conditions. Right. But yeah, I'm glad that they saved that building and and tried yeah. tried to bring it back. You know. Right. Well, hey, Mister Guy, I, I appreciate this. Uh, you're more than welcome, and I thank you for calling. Hey, hey, you take care, man, and just know that you're a very you're a very important part of Elvis's history and life story and right. and i appreciate you giving us the time of the day to tell your your part of his life okay all right uh, thank you and you have a good day sir hey you too mr guy thanks for watching this episode of glow trotting with trey don't double dribble subscribe it's free stay updated with every new video that i upload which is once every tuesday and special ones here and there please like this video if you like it share it and until next time I'll see you down the road. Thanks for watching.